Man, I love me some Mortal Kombat. Ever since Mortal Kombat 9 dropped, this series has just been getting better and better, and Mortal Kombat 11 is like its final form. Yeah, I gotta agree. This game did a lot of things right. Right? The gameplay is tight, the story is lit, and most of all, Liu Kang finally got the redemption arc he deserved. Facts. My man Liu has been taking L's ever since he met that dumbass Raiden. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Today we're going to give you an honest retelling of Liu Kang's story, all the way from the first Mortal Kombat to Mortal Kombat 11. Play that intro, son! Before we get on with this story, I gotta give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is this fresh RPG mobile game that honestly doesn't feel like a mobile game. Like I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm more of a console slash PC gamer myself, but this game, this game right here, whoo, lit as hell. The graphics look amazing, there's a whole storyline, PvP action with over 10 million players to fight against, and all of this is coupled with some really good voice acting. And like I said before, this doesn't feel like a mobile game. Like I'm honestly surprised a game of this caliber runs on my phone. So I implore you, give this game a try. It's completely free and as part of a new player program, to start your journey you get 50k silver and one epic champion. On top of all that free stuff, there's also a new rewards program for new players. You get daily login rewards for the first 90 days in the game. And to entice you a little bit more, check out these reviews, son. With over 200,000 reviews, Raid has almost a perfect score on the Play Store. You can find me under the name Bmastodonchi, using my current favorite champ, Gallic. So when you're ready, you can find the link to the game in the description. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna continue grinding in campaign mode, because my champs are kinda weak, and I can't have that. So, enjoy the rest of the video, fam. Liu Kang's story starts off like most tragic protagonists. He was orphaned at a young age and was taken in by some random martial arts temple to learn how to beat people up. This Shaolin temple was owned by the Order of Light. There, he meets his best friend Kung Lao, and they both study the teachings of the late great Kung Lao. Not to be confused with, like, our Kung Lao. Liu Kang's talent in beating people up intrigues the protector of Earthrealm, the Thunder God Raiden, and thus Liu Kang's life begins to spiral out of control. I mean, shit doesn't get crazy immediately, but it's about to. Raiden sends Liu Kang to study under the Outworld Master Bo Rai Cho, and after a few years of training, he gets inducted into the White Lotus Society. As a member of the White Lotus, it is now his duty to help protect Earthrealm. So when a Mortal Kombat tournament gets announced, Liu Kang is sent to take down the host of the tournament, Shang Tsung. This is when Liu Kang's life starts to spiral out of control. Oh, and by the way, Contrary to what some might think, the Mortal Kombat tournament is not some nice friendly place where people fight to decide who's best. This isn't Dragon Ball Z. The Mortal Kombat tournament serves as a way for other realms to defend themselves against Outworld. Since Outworld is strong as hell and is out here trying to Christopher Columbus all the other realms. So this is some real shit. Like, whole worlds are at stake here. So Liu Kang enters the tournament and claims a W for Earthrealm by beating Goro, then beating Shang Tsung. But Outworld is mad butthurt about this loss. So they sent Tarkatans to attack Liu Kang's temple and a bunch of other warriors from Earthrealm. So Liu Kang gathers a squad, which includes Kung Lao, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and a few other Earthrealm fighters, and they roll up to Outworld for another Mortal Kombat tournament. During the tournament, he meets an Adenian Outworlder named Katana, who just so happens to be the daughter of Shao Kahn, the Emperor of Outworld. And to make things even more awkward, Liu Kang wants to get in them Outworld cheeks, but that becomes important later. Anyways, Earthrealm wins the Mortal Kombat tournament again, with Liu Kang beating Shao Kahn. Then Shao Kahn gets butthurt and orders his forces to kill the Earthrealm forces. So the Earthrealmers head back home to prepare for the smoke that Outworld is trying to bring. Shao Kahn and his gang roll up to Earthrealm. He seemingly kills Kung Lao, then Liu Kang gets tight, challenges him to Mortal Kombat, and wins. With two losses under his belt, Shao Kahn just goes back home with his forces. Don't worry though, he'll be back for Armageddon. Liu Kang is blessed with some peace for a sec, until the fallen elder god Shinnok just decides to start wilding out for no reason. First he goes to Adenia and captures Kitana along with her mother Sindel, then he goes and kills some elder gods, like my guy Chill. Then he proceeds to go after Earthrealm. Now Shinnok is a god, and Liu Kang is just a regular human, so obviously Raiden should probably handle the situation, right? Nah. Liu Kang recruits Earthrealm's mightiest warriors, forms the combat Avengers, goes to save Katana and Sindel, then beats the hell out of Shinnok. Oh, you want to know what Raiden did? Well, you know, at the very end, he just kind of banished Shinnok to Netherrealm. You know, 
Nothing special, just kind of deliver the final blow. You see why I hate this guy, right? With Shinnok gone, Liu Kang can now rest for a bit, but the bad guys are using this time to plot. The Netherrealm sorcerer Quan Chi wants to team up with Shang Tsung to form a soul NATO and revive the army of Onaga, the Dragon King. But they can't achieve their extremely evil goals with the firebending Shaolin monk running around foiling their plans. So they kill him. Next nap, bitch. And Shang Tsung absorbs his soul just in case he tries to come back to life. But after Raiden ends up corrupting himself from trying to defeat Onaga, who emerged because of Quan Chi and Shang Tsung's nonsense, he revives Liu Kang. Unfortunately, the revival turns Liu Kang into a zombie, since Liu Kang's soul was absorbed by Shang Tsung. And then zombie Liu Kang basically runs around killing people until Shao Kahn causes Armageddon, and Raiden pretty much asks for a complete redo of the whole Mortal Kombat timeline. Which brings us to Mortal Kombat 9, the first game in the current timeline. The first time we see Liu Kang in this timeline is with Raiden, as Raiden receives a vision from his future self during their first Mortal Kombat tournament. The tournament goes on, and Raiden eventually gets another vision from his future self, saying he must win. We have no idea who he is, but whatever future Raiden, guess we could just play the pronoun game and risk Armageddon happening again. Raiden assumes that he must be Liu Kang, so he lets Liu Kang know. And poor Liu Kang, who has nothing but trust for the Thunder God, just kind of goes along with what Raiden says. After their conversation, Raiden leaves, and Katana shows up for that smoke. Liu Kang whoops that ass, and Katana begs him to kill her. She explains that her father Shao Kahn has instructed her to kill him, and now that she has failed, she doesn't deserve to live. Liu Kang's like, nah girl, you good. Then they part ways. The tournament continues, and Liu Kang ends up being the last Earthrealmer left. So he takes out the rest of the competition, beats Shang Tsung, then wins the tournament. Yay. And Liu Kang's flex makes Katana hella wet. Unfortunately for Earthrealm though, Liu Kang's victory is short-lived. Shang Tsung rolls up to Liu Kang's celebration party and offers another challenge to Raiden. He tells Raiden that Shao Kahn wants to start another Mortal Kombat tournament immediately. If Outworld wins, then it will merge with Earthrealm. However, if Earthrealm wins, Shao Kahn will stop going after Earthrealm altogether. Raiden denies the request, then Shang Tsung opens a portal to Outworld, which allows Tarkai and warriors to invade the Shaolin Temple. So Raiden changes his mind and accepts an invitation to the second Mortal Kombat tournament. Since Shao Kahn is out here being crazy. Liu Kang doesn't really become involved with this tournament until Katana gets imprisoned by Shao Kahn. Basically, Katana found out that Shao Kahn and Shang Tsung were using Tarkatan blood to create clones of her. Then Shao Kahn revealed that he is not her actual father. He killed her father, took his wife, then fused Outworld with her realm, Adenia. With that, Shao Kahn decided to imprison Katana and use her as an example of what happens when you don't put some respect on his name. Liu Kang overhears that Katana is not only imprisoned, but is going to get executed. So he's like, Welp, can't have that, and gets ready to save her. But Raiden's like, Chill, Liu, we still got this whole tournament to worry about. You really gonna risk Earthrealm for some fan throwing lady? Then Liu Kang is like, Bro, aren't you the one who convinced her to go against her father in the first place? This is your fault. Which is true. Raiden did kind of persuade Katana to just forget her father and join the good guys. So Kung Lao suggests that he and Liu Kang go save Katana, while Raiden and the other Earthrealmers handle the tournament for now. With that, the two Shaolin monks find out from Goro that Katana is at the Colosseum, then head over there themselves. Liu Kang defies Raiden's orders again by going to save his girl Katana instead of participating in his match. Then Raiden allows Kung Lao to fight in Liu Kang's place, thinking that maybe he is the person who must win. So Kung Lao does his thing and wins his match, but then Shao Kahn snaps his neck. Next snap, bitch. Liu Kang gets pissed about the death of his best friend, then punches Shao Kahn right through his chest. That's what you get, you rat bastard. With Shao Kahn dead, Raiden assumes that Earthrealm is forever safe. But Shao Kahn is not dead. Instead, he and Quan Chi find a loophole within the rules of Mortal Kombat. Losing the tournament only prevents you from merging with Earthrealm, not from invading it. So Quan Chi resurrects Sindel, then Outworld invades Earthrealm. Raiden really tries his best to stop Outworld, but nothing he does proves to be enough to change the timeline, which means Shao Kahn's ultimate victory is still imminent. So Raiden uses the best strategy he can think of. He's gonna snitch. He decides that the only guys that can stop this are the Elder Gods. So he and Liu Kang go to the Elder Gods in order to tell them that Shao Kahn is out here invading Earthrealm. But the Elder Gods are like, nah bro, this sounds like a you problem. When they return to Earthrealm to tell the rest of their allies the bad news, they find most of their allies dead. Apparently Sindel was sent to just murk all of them. I mean, Nightwolf managed to finish her, but not before she killed like, mad people. Katana is one of the poor souls that face Sindel's wrath. When Liu Kang sees her, he comforts her until her passing. Needless to say, Liu Kang is done with Raiden's vision nonsense. All is done so far is get Liu Kang's best friend and his love interest killed. So when Raiden suggested they go to Quan Chi to ask for help against Outworld, Liu Kang loses it, then tells him to go on his own. 
When they reconvene, Raiden tells Liu Kang that he's finally figured out his visions. That he who must win is Shao Kahn. Once Shao Kahn tries to merge the realms, then the Elder Gods will intervene and stop him. Liu Kang hears Raiden's epiphany and is like, my guy, are you dumb? After their argument, Shao Kahn starts making his way to Earthrealm. Liu Kang is down to beat his ass one more time, but Raiden tries to stop him. So in normal Mortal Kombat fashion, they have a fight to decide who's right. Liu Kang loses, but still tries to kill Raiden after. So Raiden kills Liu Kang in self-defense. Now I wanna be mad at this, but Liu Kang did come at Raiden all types of crazy. I mean, yes, Raiden did kind of ruin everything while trying to save Earthrealm, and he probably could have figured out another way to subdue Liu Kang, but I'm sorry, Liu Kang. Don't start beef if you can't end it. And Raiden definitely ended it. After that nonsense, Shao Kahn beats the mess out of Raiden, tries to merge the two realms, then the Elder Gods grant Raiden enough power to completely do away with the Outworld Tyrant. So Earthrealm is safe. Kinda. Apparently, everything that transpired was a part of Shinnok's plan. Quan Chi, who was actually working for Shinnok this whole time, plans on retrieving Shinnok's amulet in order to release him from Netherrealm, so he can conquer both Earthrealm and Outworld. With Shao Kahn now dead, conquering Outworld should be hella easy. And Quan Chi also has access to the souls of everyone that died. Which means he and Shinnok currently have an army of revenants, Liu Kang and Kung Lao included. With all the pieces set, Quan Chi begins to carry out his plans. Which brings us to Mortal Kombat X, which honestly doesn't contain a lot of Liu Kang. Basically, after Quan Chi manages to revive Shinnok, Shinnok reveals that he plans on corrupting the Jinsei, which is Earthrealm's life force. During Raiden's efforts to stop this plan, Revenant Liu Kang and a bunch of other Revenants confront him. After Liu Kang finishes roasting the Thunder God, he tells Raiden that his only goal right now is to help Shinnok rule the realms. But Raiden defeats Liu Kang and his Revenant squad. Then together with the help of the other Earthrealm warriors, they defeat Shinnok and restore the Jinsei. But since Shinnok did manage to corrupt the Jinsei before his defeat, Raiden ends up getting corrupted when he restores it, thus making him more of a ruthless tyrant than a kind god who accidentally ruins everything. After Shinnok's defeat, Liu Kang and Katana decide to rule Netherrealm, since it was kinda just left for grabs. Raiden pays the undead lovebirds a visit, and basically tells them that if they ever step foot in Earthrealm again, they will have a big problem. Which finally brings us to Mortal Kombat 11, probably the best game in this timeline. Agreed. So Mortal Kombat 11 begins with Liu Kang and Katana planning their invasion of Earthrealm. Raiden holds true to the promise he made to them at the end of Mortal Kombat X and brings a squad of Earthrealmers to attack Netherrealm. Cassie Cage, Jackie Briggs, and Sonya Blade lead this invasion along with Raiden. The invasion goes well, except for the part where Liu Kang's interference causes Sonya Blade to die. With the Netherrealm Cathedral destroyed because of the invasion, Liu Kang fears that they are too vulnerable. But then the primordial being known as Kronika, who just so happens to be Shinnok's mom, appears to save the day. She rebuilds the cathedral, then recruits Liu Kang and Katana in her mission to restart the timeline that Raiden altered. Once Liu Kang and Katana hear that this new timeline will not include Raiden, they immediately side with Kronika. Cause screw Raiden. To aid in her mission, she brings back the younger versions of a bunch of Mortal Kombat heroes and villains. This includes dudes like Kano, Shao Kahn, Johnny Cage, Jax, Sonya, Kung Lao, Raiden, and of course, Liu Kang. Young Raiden and Liu Kang hear about the wild stuff that present day Raiden has been up to. Both Raiden and Liu Kang are all types of confused, so they regroup with the rest of the Earth Realmers to figure out exactly what is going on. Liu Kang and Kung Lao conclude that Kronika must be after the Jinsei, but assume that their future counterparts are already doing their best to defend it. Then the present day Earthrealmers tell the Shaolin duo about what their future holds. One awkward situation later, they head over to the Jinsei themselves in order to stop Kronika. They run into young Scorpion, beat him up, run into their future selves, beat them up, then confront Garrus, Kronika's lackey. Garrus loses to them, but freezes time in order to escape with the energy from the Jinsei. With this energy, Kronika can re-sculpt the sands of time and give birth to her Raiden-free timeline. After the Shaolin monks fail the mission to protect the Jinsei, Liu Kang joins the rest of the Earth Realmers in stopping Kronika's plan. The quest to save the timeline sends Liu Kang and Kung Lao to Outworld, where they witness the defeat of Shao Kahn by Katana's hand. With Shao Kahn no longer a problem, Katana claims the throne of Outworld as Katana Khan. He's now officially out of your league. Then she joins Earthrealm in their fight against Kronika. Later, young Scorpion attempts to join the good side after the death of present day Scorpion. We'd love to get into that more, but this is the story of Liu Kang, so yeah. Anyways, young Scorpion finds out that his clan was restored thanks to Raiden, so he tries to tell Raiden that he is here to help. Liu Kang believes Scorpion, but Raiden refuses to hear it because of how Scorpion betrayed him in the past. Fuck your bitch ass hat, fuck your bitch ass lightning, and fuck your bitch ass future. I does what I want. Liu Kang blames Raiden's distrust on Shinnok's amulet, which Raiden is currently holding. So Liu Kang is forced to defend Scorpion, which causes the two to fight. 
But in the middle of the fight, Raiden sees multiple visions of him and Liu Kang fighting in different timelines. This makes him realize that Kronika has been trying to get them to fight this whole time. So instead of accidentally killing Liu Kang again, young Raiden redeems himself by dropping Shinnok's amulet and accepting Scorpion's help. But right after this, Kronika snatches Liu Kang. Boink! So now the mission to save the timeline is also a rescue mission for Liu Kang. At Kronika's base of operations, present day Liu Kang uses his newfound sorcery powers to absorb the soul of young Liu Kang to make himself stronger and kill the young Shaolin monk. With this upgrade in strength, Liu Kang heads straight to Raiden in order to give him the hands that he has been waiting to serve. Raiden takes another realm warrior on his own after hearing what he did to his younger self. But instead of killing Liu Kang, Raiden uses some newfound power to fuse with Liu Kang, thus forming Earthrealm's new protector, the god of handsology, Raiden Kang. Well, it, it's still Liu Kang. It's just like, you know, Raiden and Liu Kang are fused. So yeah. God Liu Kang heads over to Kronika, who reverses time back to the prehistoric age. They fight, he wins, then he hits her with that mean bottle cap challenge kick. With Kronika defeated, Human Raiden tells Liu Kang that it is now up to him to use the sands of time to reshape the timeline. Liu Kang doesn't feel like carrying out this task on his own, so he tells Raiden that he will rejoin with Katana, then he parts ways with his old master. Once he reunites with his love interest, they rebuild the timeline together. And I guess this means that the timeline did end up getting rebuilt, just not by Kronika. So does this mean that Mortal Kombat 11 is the end of the franchise? Or will there be a whole new set of Mortal Kombat games that take place in this new timeline made by Liu Kang and Katana? Honestly, we're not sure. I guess we're just gonna have to wait till Mortal Kombat 12 drops, whenever that happens. What's going on, Donji fam? And thank you for watching yet another episode of Honest Gaming History. I'm sorry it took so long. I know I keep on saying that, but this is a sponsored video. I had a lot of shit to do with work. Life hit me like a brick wall, but you know what? I'm here, I'm standing, we here. You watching this end credit, you made it with me and we lit. So with all that being said, do not forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with all your friends, comment who you wanna see me do next and subscribe if you have not already. As for my shirt giveaway, do not forget to share this video if you want to take part in it and just send me a DM on Instagram saying, showing me that you share the video. I'm going to announce it in its own little video just saying, hey, these people won and then I'll talk to you guys for your address and then I'll just send it out. So yeah. Thank you to my amazing patrons who make videos like this possible with their very kind donations. And if you are not already a patron but would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description down below and find out how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month. And if you cannot support the channel with your funds, don't forget liking, sharing, and commenting is always a great help. So I'm trying to keep this thing short, so that's about it. Uh, check out The Raid, it's a really good game. Thank you once again for sponsoring me, and yeah, I'll be back later. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, and take care.